More now on our special weekend-long coverage of Block Island's 350th anniversary. Let's go back out to Spring House, where the sun has been dipping in and out, Gene. Yeah, the weather's always a little different out there. Chief meteorologist Mark Searles can testify to that, Mark. No, absolutely. Uh, and, and the locals will tell you the same thing, Gene and Patrice. Uh, the weather here on Block Island is, is quite often very much unlike as it is on the mainland. And certainly today, we had some heavy driving rain uh, and a strong southeasterly wind. So as we were out at the southeast light and at Mohegan Bluffs, uh, we really could see the effect that that type of weather was having on the bluffs and its major problem uh, concerning erosion. Take a look. The Mohegan Bluffs in the area around the Southeast Light are one of Block Island's most popular attractions. On any given summer day, several hundred people can be found along the beach beneath the bluffs. The history is rich. Did you ever wonder where the bluffs got its name? Story goes that the, the, local, the local Indians, um, <clears throat> or Native Americans, the Manaseans, there was a, a war party from the Mohegans that came to Block Island. They supposedly drove them over the bluff near here. The walk down the bluffs is steep, but thanks to the work of the Rhode Island DEM, back around 1980, these steps make it a lot easier. The town of New Shore maintains the stairs today. All right, so we're about to walk down the steps down to the bluffs now. Are we right. going to see anything interesting along the way? Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see uh, coastal shrub habitat. It's moving a lot in this in this high wind, but uh, we might see a few birds. Uh, it's very valuable habitat for uh, the birds that nest here, and also the coastal migrants. We'll see the ocean. We'll get a good look at the bluffs. Yeah. Yeah. It's a heck of a day out on Block Island. Just a little bit of wind. All right, we're heading down. <laughs> now, you may think that the erosion of the bluffs has a lot to do with the ocean and the wind and the storms, and although that's partially true, another key factor in what's happening here to the Mohegan Bluffs has to do with this stream right here. It may look harmless, but it plays a major role into what's happening to the bluffs. It's a natural process. Experts like Chris say we need to adapt to it and understand it before it's too late. Yeah, so the bluffs have, you know, they've got the water coming at them this way from the ocean, and then they've got the groundwater pulling them mm -hmm. out. So they really, if they're in a no-win situation, it's just, it's just a matter of time, isn't it? Yeah, right. We, we were talking before, but the island is not made of bedrock like some of your points on the mainland. So the, the forces of nature can combine to, to just continue to make the island smaller through erosion. Yeah, and that, you know, that's truly the battle. You know, we, like, like you were saying there in the piece, you know, we typically think it's the storms, it's the wind, it's the ocean that's causing the erosion, but really it's that groundwater, too, that plays a major role. And we could see the clay just being pulled right off the bluffs today and being washed out. You could see the sediment just there in the water offshore. So uh, not a good sign for them, uh, certainly when they get weather like this, but it is a natural process, and that's what Chris Littlefield's telling us. He says, you know, there's really nothing we can do about it. It is nature. We just have to adapt to it. And, uh, and that's what they're doing out here. That's what, that's what Chris's role and, and uh, many of his colleagues out here are, uh, are doing a uh, wonderful job out here on Block Island.